Yes, we've been under investigation for three years. Uh, the things that they are accusing us of doing that they think are not allowed, we, you know, we we haven't made an attempt to hide anything. Mm -hmm. um, there's no victim. They're not alleging fraud. They're not charging any individual at the company. Essentially, what they're saying is, is if any individual or entity holds a cryptocurrency token mm -hmm. and sells that token while actively improving or marketing the way in which that token is used, that token, when you sold it, was a security. I live unbanked off of cryptocurrency, and I use BitRefill extensively because it lets me pay with crypto at places that don't yet accept it directly. This one service, more than any other, helps me live on crypto. Pay your prepaid phone bill, or buy gift cards to thousands of major retailers around the world, all with cryptocurrency, including for exact amounts so you don't have to buy more gift credit than you need for a specific purchase. You can use BitRefill without an account, but if you get an account, you can earn rewards points, which translate to savings, and you can also hold a balance denominated in dollars or euros to protect yourself against market crashes. Go to bitrefill.com, click Create Account, and enter the referral code DCN, or follow the link in the description. Hey everyone, I have the fantastic pleasure of speaking with the one and only Jeremy Kaufman, founder and CEO of Centralized Scam Coin. Li I mean, of Library Project. How's it going, man? Uh, it's it's great to be here uh, with you today. Not here under great circumstances, but I'm I'm feeling very good about everything that we've built at at Library and where the project is headed. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who don't remember, my very first post on this channel, which was originally a library exclusive for like a year almost, was also not under great circumstances when you're having those banking problems. So. Basically, I'm the guy you talk to when like your life's in the toilet, sort of. So I'm <laughs> sorry for that. Yeah. Well, hey, the banking thing was uh, small potatoes uh, to mm -hmm. what's going on. But when that banking thing was going on, you know, we're we're twenty, thirty, maybe even forty or fifty times larger um, than where we were when that banking story happened. Yeah, you know, we've been in the New York Times and the National Review and Bloomberg and all of these places because library's been blowing up. Yeah. And and part of me thinks that uh, part of why that's happening with this is happening is is specifically uh, because of that but for anyone who uh, is not familiar with library um and mm -hmm. is potentially not watching this on a uh, library app uh you can go to uh, odyssey is the easiest way to use it odysee.com uh, and then we have a uh, completely uh, open source decentralized peer-to-peer -peer client that you can download at lbry.com yeah so for real quick it seems like you guys have been under your know, library Inc, the company behind the decentralized protocol. Cause there is a distinction has been under investigation by the U S securities and exchange commission, the sec since about 2018. And now they've finally announced that they actually plan to go ahead and sue. So first off, when they're talking about suing, what are they suing for? Like, what are they trying to get out of it? Is it just damages? They're trying to get money. They're trying to get you to stop using the token. Like, what are they trying to get? as a conclusion yeah. of this it's it's basically all of those things and yes we've been under investigation for three years uh the things that they are accusing us of doing that they think are not allowed we, you know we we haven't made an attempt to hide anything mm -hmm. um there's no victim so no one has said that we defrauded them in any way mm -hmm. the, the sec is bringing this action on its own independently they're not alleging fraud they're not charging any individual at the company. Essentially what they're saying is, is if any individual or entity holds a cryptocurrency token mm -hmm. and sells that token while actively improving or marketing the way in which that token is used, that token when you sold it was a security. Mm -hmm. um, and so under this standard, it's not related to whether you're in the United States uh, it's not even related to um, being a corporate entity. Um, so it's simply related to the standard that they're advancing here is if you sold a token while also in it, um, building the thing that that token is used for, that that is a, a security, right? Um, so we started selling, We the library blockchain launched 
in uh, 2016, in the summer of 2016. Um, actually, I think before the summer even started. And we did not uh, sell the token uh, until uh, more than a year mm. after the network was live. Uh, after you could use it, you could you could uh, um, buy Hollywood films on the network at that point in time. Yeah. You still can, but you could like it was it was it was up, it was live, it was working, and so we started selling some of the token um, because we had some, and it would allow it just put more uh, you know more tokens uh, available uh, mm -hmm. on the market. Uh, you know, we never sold more than ten percent of the token either. So you know the amount that other people were trading. You know, we weren't dumping it, we weren't trying to influence the markets or or any of those things. And so, you know, we followed all of our legal advice that we received from our counsel, which was Perkins Cooey. And uh, so it's really, it's tough to see, honestly, for mm -hmm. me, uh, w why they're coming after us. Um, yeah. Because the standards under which they're coming after us, they could come after anyone. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, obviously, the gold standard, as it were, is Bitcoin in terms of this, because... It was created by some anonymous creator who ended up probably mining a whole bunch of coins but hasn't touched them since. He might be dead or even worse, Craig Wright. And he, um, it seemed because of this decentralized kind of distribution mechanism, there's a kind of no one to sue. There's nothing to kind of go after. It's so do you think that the what the, their problem is is that a company, like a for-profit company, minted some tokens – and then is selling them in order to you know do to take profit. Do you think that that's the thing the thing that they're very specifically going after? No, the minting is not in any way central to this case. Mm. Under the standard that they're advancing here, it would not matter whether we mined the token or whether we even bought the token on the markets. Mm. Not that would it would it's simply that we had the token and we sold the token while being an entity that also improved. Um, it, it continued to develop the the, the network. Um, there, you know, so I think if you aggressively interpreted this, you could say that some Bitcoin developers are selling securities mm -hmm. because they are continuing to develop Bitcoin. And there is no legal, there's no law that says that Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't securities. There's a statement made by one person at the SEC who used to be in charge. Yeah. He's not in charge anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Ethereum which I think is a tremendous technology is building Ethereum 2.0 because Ethereum 1.0 did had problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a small group of people coordinating the development of Ethereum 2.0. If those people are also selling tokens, they are under this standard. And I'm not trying to like get them in trouble. Yeah, of course. I think all of this should be legal. We should be free to trade them. I'm just trying to express like, this is a, this is not, this is out of line with mm -hmm. what the sec said in 2018 in the where ha, what's the it's the hinman speech i forget what mm -hmm. it's titled uh this is different this is in violation of what they have previously said yeah and so when i'm trying to think about sec violations and things like that um I, if obviously i think they're a horrendous entity it does not need to exist as or at least does not need to exist as a government entity it could just be like a a warning label entity kind of a thing a private you know kind of like the like the kosher certification thing on things you know uh but there's been the sec has i hate to say it in this way been relatively lax on crypto they've let a lot of stuff get out like get away from them and like a few of the ones i could think of are like for example the eos settlement thing where they got essentially a slap on the wrist for you know releasing just raising tons of money selling it to a bunch of people and they didn't even like sell a finished product at all and then of course the big one is like ripple which basically created a token in is in in its entirety and doesn't really do much and just has been selling it as like the pretty much the only form of profit for the company and has been a little i believe duplicitous in the way they've marketed the token when they kind of figured out the SEC might come after them. Like there's a lot of that stuff they're kind of being, but other than like the big examples, like, and like, I, I'm surprised SEC even knows what library is or di uh, more importantly in 2018, just even knew it existed. So what the heck, like, why, why do you think what's yeah. some speculation? Maybe I have, I have two mm. um, explanations that I, 
um, that are potential. And, but I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I ask myself this question because it really doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So the sort of more innocent explanation, which is I, I tend to not get conspiratorial. So if, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick this one, mm -hmm. which is that if you're if you are, you know, if your job is to produce enforcements mm -hmm. and your boss is going to come in and say, well, how many enforcements are you producing? And you're lazy you might not try to produce enforcements against those that deserve it and rather produce enforcements against those it's easy to produce enforcements against. Mm -hmm. And our company has been one of the most transparent in the space. We published quite publicly everything that we were doing, all of the materials. At, we publish a log of every single cryptocurrency transaction that the company makes, and they're all publicly downloadable. And so you know, and we basically said, hey, this is what we're doing. We didn't try to set up chains of corporate entities or these kinds of things, which, by the way, I want to be clear, mm -hmm. don't uh, uh, don't absolve you from needing to follow the law. Yeah. But may yeah, but may make it such that the enforcer who is lazy doesn't go after you. Mm -hmm. So I think that that um, that's potentially part of it. Um, if I engage in more conspiratorial thinking, it's that you have um regulators whose political sympathies are very much towards the government should have more control and be mm. more in control of things there these are people who are probably for um you know more laws against um guns and more law just more regulation of everything mm -hmm. and this is a technology that you don't have to look pretty deeply into before you realize that it creates a, a, a pretty radical amount of personal choice for individuals so it has different properties than the web 2.0 way of sharing where we can have experiences like YouTube or experiences like even Dropbox or other things where we retain much more local control. And if you're someone who thinks the government should have oversight over everything, it's, it's pretty easy to be uh, worried about this technology. Mm. And so, you know, the, the people that you're working at the SEC, I mean, these are people who think the government should have oversight everything. And they see that, hey, this is a company that's potentially going to make it hard for us to control what people are saying, or make it hard for us to control the files that people are sharing. And, you know, let's find a way to, to go after it, or even not even that that level of conspiracy where they're like, let's mm. bust library and more just being like, I think I'm going to get these guys because I don't like them. Yeah. I don't like what they're doing, you know? Well, back in 2018, so obviously I've been a big fan of library of conceptually, of course, since the very beginning. And I've been a big pusher, <laughs> pusher of the stuff since, you know, last year. Been like very, very big. But let's be honest, 2018, there might have been a lot going on beneath the surface, but like as far as who is actually, like when they started looking into it, who actually thought the library would ever be a threat to authority amongst all the other things going on, you know? Well, it's not necessarily that they thought that it was, that we would achieve what we've achieved. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you asked me, would we be here in 2018? I mean, I'm a pretty realistic startup founder. Growing to 20 million people is is something that you hope to do when you start a company, but it's uh, not something a lot of people achieve. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still clear that I was the type of person and we were the type of company who were trying to do something that a regulator wouldn't like. Yeah. Not because it's against the law, but because they want the government's fingers and everything. Hmm. So... We have this situation. Uh, first off, what is so library is run kind of by a centralized company that does the development and runs a few of these big like portals like Odyssey. And there's a library foundation out there. Not not too still too sure at this point what it, what exactly it does. But basically, if they try to come after library the company and try to you know go after that. Uh, First off, is it always possible that like a new development team with like funny mustaches could just crop up in Canada or some other country that just doesn't mind? Like, let's just say they just demolish the company or the company says, you know what, you're right. We're just going to like sell everything we own, go away. And then like somewhere in Singapore, something crops up and starts just developing instead. Like, is that sort of a realistic, you know, worst case scenario, but, you know, still everything's OK? Yes. And I, I, precisely that. I mean, we, so everything we do is, mm -hmm. uh, is open source. It's all on our GitHub, the network itself, the blockchain and the data network layer are not threatened by this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's that what they're threatening it with, what, what's a threat here is basically the tokens that the companies holds the money that the company has and 
the registration of the token as a security in the United States, which would make it harder for United States residents to use the token and to exchange the token. Um, that's what's at risk. Yeah, so they're alleging it's a security. And so it seems like uh, even if there was the, sh the shuffle on, even if you know development continued on in a different entity in a different country, because of course it's a decentralized open source protocol, it would still be a big pain in the ass for people in the US to buy the token. And if you like were a creator in the US and you received those tokens from it, then you might be under some kind of scrutiny or problems. Yeah, no, well, I don't think any individuals would be under scrutiny or problems. Like, it, well, but that's the thing. And so that's what yeah. makes it, that's yeah. why I say it's a suppression program. Because what they're trying to do is go bite by bite to the point at which individuals could potentially be in trouble. But mm -hmm. we're, at that, you know, at, at that standard, again, you, you buy... That's all of DeFi, right? Mm -hmm. why, are, why are people buying DeFi tokens? I'm not, again, never trying to attack anyone. I want all this stuff to be legal. Of course. Why are people buying DeFi tokens? They're buying DeFi tokens because they think those tokens are going to be worth more money in the future. Okay. Yeah. Are the DeFi tokens still being developed? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So under this standard, right, it doesn't matter what else you do. That's it. Those are all the facts, right? It mm -hmm. doesn't matter how hard, like we never marketed this as mm -hmm. something to go and buy to make money off. We always said, use it on the protocol. I mean, they may, if the SEC found any messages, it's like one random message in a chat from a mod, you know, that you know, we've always strongly discouraged. We said, buy this to use it. We've said it from day one. We've said it consistently as a drumbeat of a message constantly, you know? So there's no, um, I don't think there's any um, escaping this under this standard. They'll first, they'll get all the companies, then they'll go after the exchanges that haven't followed the law and they'll start going after individuals, right? The United mm -hmm. States government doesn't want people to be able to use cryptocurrency. I think that like it's different. And uh, there's a great article uh, on this in terms of um, what's actually going on behind the scenes from a law firm called AGG. And I can share that link with you. Uh, but this is, this is part of uh, the government recognizing or regulators recognizing that cryptocurrency means that they won't have the same level of of control and i think big tech is scared i think the banks are scared and i think the regulators are scared hmm. very interesting now let's play a little bit of devil's advocate on this side of what is there a chance that the reason or the the thing that made this able to happen this bad thing going on was something to do with a centralized entity controlling the development and you know the funding of that. So, like for example, all, all this whole thing seems a whole lot like Ethereum, right? The way Ethereum got created is a group of people that did an ICO, in fact, you know, the first major ICO, I guess, and they they raised a bunch of money by selling people Ethereum tokens, which were actively developed on to later and to this point. But because there's like an Ethereum foundation and it's like it's not all about Vitalik or whatever else they want to say, like because of the way it works, it just they never got like nabbed by this, I guess. Is it just the 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 centralized company entity, do you think? I think it I I think it made it easier, but I think they are like I think under the standard that they've established here, they can go after uh, uh, people that are developing Ethereum. I think they probably regret saying what they said. Mm -hmm. um about ethereum and um yes i mean i said this already like yes mm -hmm. if we like it i i do retrospectively essentially wish we had been shadier essentially yeah uh, like i i like regret i almost regret being how honest we were um so i do think my honesty m m made us a target so yeah i do i, I think that's true but i don't think that there is like that i if, if somehow if people think that they are being clever and somehow going to escape this no i think you're just um further down the line and in, in who you're gonna uh, get there's that comic where like the boat's sinking yeah uh, uh, you know like and and the people one side are bailing it out and the other people are on the other side of the boat and they're like ah oh, glad it's not us like mm -hmm. you know this is this is i think the situation um that we will be facing and yeah you could go completely anonymous i'm not comfortable really living my life that way um and going anonymous may again maybe that means they won't find you but they'll find you eventually if you get big enough like you're not gonna make yeah one mistake you know um so um yeah i think that um i think they could get anyone yeah yeah and so basic that sort of answers i guess the next question which is what if you did all this according to perfect 
of pristine cypherpunk values on the surface at least and instead just had like a fair launch and a fair mining except you kind of like had some like newer mining software that you and the guys that be on the, the company that decentralized whatever and you just mined all those tokens like legitimately like and then it was just just the same thing would they and there's no company there's no pre-mine in this case even though the, all the, the chips fell exactly in the same spots do you think you'd be in a better position honestly um, I don't. Maybe. I mean, obviously, it's crazy yeah, speculation, yeah, but, it, but whatever. Like, yes, like we might be in a better position because we would have been farther down the the, the chopping block. Mm -hmm. I don't think we would be in a better position in terms of the actual legal status of the activity. Mm. Um, because, and it doesn't matter. As I said, like it's not the the, the fact that we uh, pre mined a minority of the tokens is not central. It's it's we could have mined them after it launched. We could have bought them on the markets after it launched under this standard it's the it's the sale of them at the market price while simultaneously improving uh the or marketing the thing that you are working on yeah so do you think it's the working on part or the marketing part because i know they might have mentioned both but you know part of like it going back to like the the bitcoin maximalist purity test type thing about they hate marketing and you know, bitcoin doesn't need to be marketed even though a lot of people shill it all over the place but like just just saying if you hadn't marketed it and you just sort of like sold then maybe that would have been different yeah we didn't i mean we didn't even market it that much we're yeah. talking about like some, you know posting to our own platform about updates mm -hmm. and post to social media channels about what we're doing almost all of our growth was word of mouth we weren't spending money on advertising and mm -hmm. ads and things like this i'm not going to say we spent zero dollars but it was a very small amount of money mostly as experiments to kind of see you know what mm -hmm. what happens if you do this but we were not one of those companies that was like you know in 2017 2018 when your facebook feed was full of like buy this or that we were not one of those companies i mean i was honestly i didn't even know what i was doing i was shocked by the level of response that there was to um to what we had built i came at this not from the financial side i came at it from the computer science side mm -hmm. of saying this is a new type of database technology that's what bitcoin was and that part of what disappoints me so much about bitcoin as much as i love it is like we can do so much more with this stuff than mm -hmm. what we're doing like it's great that we have money that's not con that it's great that there's private money now because i'm a i'm a big supporter of free banking but it's not just money. It's the ability to reach consensus in a database. And, and we can build all kinds of interesting things on top of that ability to do that. And so we modified Bitcoin substantially. We added additional opcodes and additional functions. There's a whole parallel Merkle tree related to storing content metadata. Uh, and this is all, by the way, it's all published. This yeah. is, we have an IEEE vetted computer science paper that was presented at an academic IEEE conference. It's a very prestigious engineering organization. And like, I, you know, I fell in love as someone who was into peer to peer technology for since before BitTorrent even existed a, a, about what a, a, what a blockchain, what a, and if you can look at our early marketing materials yeah. and it was like, you know, Bitcoin and BitTorrent had a baby. Mm -hmm. And that's what I fell in love with was we could use this blockchain database as a way of storing content metadata. And I couldn't stop thinking about it and I had to build it. And um, and so it's like, look, the fact that the tokens have a freely floating price is a necessary property of the system. It's not but it's not something like we didn't set out to create money or to create financial instruments. We set out to create a public blockchain that can be used to store metadata and identity information about publishing. And that's why we say, you know, library does to publishing what what Bitcoin does to money. Um, and so and, and we begged them. I begged them like, OK, like tell me how, like, I'll give you money. I'll set, like, I'll, I'll admit uh, to doing things that are wrong that I don't even think are wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, and, but, but like, tell me how I can operate this business, like legally. Um, and they would never engage in that conversation. They're unwilling to tell you. So it's, it's, you know, it, this is, it's selective enforcement uh, from an, from an agency uh, it's destroying innovation. It's destroying the ability for, for U.S. companies to start new cryptocurrencies. And the guidance around the Dow is four years old. Where's mm -hmm. the new guidance? Where are the rules of the road? They yeah. have they've, they've published nothing. And then they go after and selectively bust people. Yeah. So it's probably like a, a it 
seems more and more like it's like a quota type of a thing where they just they wanted to bust someone and then they're like, oh, these guys don't seem like they can fight back. And then they kind of go for it. Is that kind of yep. your, your sentiment on that, too? Yes. Yeah. They ex- I don't want to say explicitly. They insinuated mm-hmm. that their intent was to run up costs against us because they thought that they could uh, that they could screw with us that way. And because we weren't willing to um, we what well, we were willing to settle, we were willing to settle in literally any way that uh, did not require registering the token as a security. We were mm-hmm. happy to destroy Library Inc. We were mm-hmm. willing to destroy or get rid of tokens. We sent them this long list of rules about how we would how we would sell the tokens and you never will never sell more than $20 to someone in a day, you know, all kinds of things that we offered to do to, to, uh, and there was no interest in anything other than our head. That's all they've ever been interested in. Yeah. And so by head, so what could be, what are the possible outcomes of this sort of lawsuit? Because when we're talking about the head, like if you settle with the sec privately before there's ever a thing, they like that doesn't show up on anyone's radar. They want to like, they again, they got to make an example of someone routinely, and then yeah. it's kind of your turn on the chopping block. But it's like, what are they actually trying to go after? We, In- we'd lose, um, we'd lose the uh pre mine, we'd lose all the money the company has, and the the um, and the company would probably just have to like the company mm-hmm. might end up basically closing. But what we would do is I have a, I have a $10 million check waiting for me as soon as I get through this uh, uh, case because mm. you don't want the money in the company when it's a risk of getting taken by the government, right? Yeah. So, so we're trying to get through this. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, But there is no chance that uh, the work is not going to uh, continue. I mean, you can see all of the big names getting on uh, to the platform and talking about it. I mean, this technology is so necessary right yeah. now. Yeah. Right. Uh, with everything that is going on with all the people getting canceled and deplatformed and not just people getting deplatformed, but platforms getting deplatformed. Mm-hmm. Right. And like library solves all of these things. The work will continue in some form, no matter what. Mm-hmm. No one is going to lose any of their cryptocurrency. No one is going to lose any of their content. This is an attempt by the government to screw over the people who made it. But it is yeah. they, they can't they can't destroy the network and we will pick right back up under a new entity with zero tokens, you know, if that's what we have to do. Yeah. And so that seems like, I hate to say it in like this kind of term, that seems like an acceptable uh, solution for the SEC. Of course, is a hundred percent speculation, right? But it seems like they don't care so much about shutting down library as they do getting their judgment, getting their thing. And then they're, they're like, yep, we won. We put the bad guys away. We're done. And then they well, move on to the next thing. This is what's confusing to me about this is that like, okay, and uh, again, they won't answer. So you can't ask questions, right? So they can cut, they can tell you you're breaking the law, but I say, well, okay, but like, well, how does the law work? What happens mm-hmm. if we do this? What happens if we do that? And they can't, they will of course refuse to tell you anything. Um, so very, very like Kafka situation. Um, uh, and by the way, and this is an aside, but I need to make it because this is also yes. one of the more absurd things that's going on, right? So even this Ethereum thing where they say that, they, that a coin can transition, okay? Well, if a coin can transition from one thing to the other, okay, like, by what standard? By what rules? Like it would be helpful, for example, if you're saying that on in 2018 Ethereum is fine, but in 2016 it wasn't. Like, what date did it switch? What's the month? Like, if you if you actually have this test that you're applying, then you ought to be able to like tell me discreetly in time when the transition happened. You know, and they they can't do that because they don't have any standard. It's all by the seat of their pants. Mm-hmm. It's there's no actual coherency. Um, uh, so well, I forgot the main question that I was, I was actually supposed to answer. Well, yeah, but that's just, that's just the way things go. And so I remember ripple going really hard, trying to make sure XRP was not called ripple anymore, even though that's what XRP means is ripple <laughs> and trying to pretend it was a currency and all this kind of stuff. I, they're probably angling for a judgment that just says, well, it transitioned to not as a security at this date, but you sold a bunch of stuff before this date, so we're going to get you a little bit for that. You're going to slap on the wrist, and then you go. That's probably well, what that's they're angling what, for. We'll take that. We'll take that. I'm willing to give them money. I'm willing yeah. to give them millions of dollars. Like, But what I need is clarity moving forward, mm-hmm. and that's what they've refused to give. Mm-hmm. Because, if, it, and because really what they ought to be saying is that the tokens that Library Inc., has our securities not all library tokens how is a token minted by a miner that we never interacted with Mm -hmm. a security that we offered it doesn't it's nonsense 
It's a, it's a little bit crazy. So yeah. we got two big questions here. So first off is what does this do for the rest of crypto? We're kind of like touching into that, but like, does this, do you think that the, do you think this, this is just something nonsense they're coming after by the, the seat of their pants? Or do you think that this is going to actually force most crypto innovation to just not happen in the jurisdiction of the United States of America? I, I think if we lose this case, it will be very difficult for any cryptocurrency company to, it's not it's not even about operating out of the United States mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it's like you can incorporate uh, like it's still a security inside of the US. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I think this puts all of crypto at almost all of crypto at risk in the US, regardless of how it's developed or where it's made. I think this is like one of the most disastrous, like extreme possible things that they could be doing here. Yeah. So basically what that would the precedent that that would set would be not only is it not crypto based companies in the US but just any crypto activity just people start like you just not wanting to buy it they start not wanting to sell it they just start all that innovation just flows around the US entirely not just the creating innovation but like the using it and then the rest of the world kind of like takes advantage of this while the US kind of holds their iron fist over the old financial system yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't I want to be clear that I don't think it happens like immediately as a result of this case. But I think that this case is building towards that and gets them a good portion of the way there. Yeah. And on now to to be spe uh, skeptical on that bit now. Well, you know, just the other side, like Chipotle is giving away Bitcoin today. Like this stuff is going huge. This stuff is going mainstream. Oh, it seems like, you know, the crypto, you know, Elon Musk and his Teslas and just everyone, everything's about crypto these days. It seems like crypto is won almost in a lot of ways. Do you think that that's just the lull before the storm? Or do you think there's going to be like, well, some of the cryptos, the new stuff is going to be kind of like there's the legacy stuff, like maybe Bitcoin and Ethereum that end up being, you know, flourishing in the US, but the other stuff kind of becomes more more difficult to get going. What do you think? Yeah, um, I think it's um, I think that I think that we'll have to see. I definitely think that anything new is borderline impossible um, uh, to get going. I think that the regulators are completely out of touch with the people. And I mm -hmm. do think that there like will be a reckoning like I'm not I don't think they're going to win. Mm -hmm. um, right. Like I, th I think that there few companies have been willing, um, you know, a lot have been willing to take the uh, risk. But I don't think they're going to win. And I think that when so many people are behind something, it's very difficult for the government um, to do it, even if it wants to. Mm -hmm. So I do think one of the number one things that we can do is continue to spread not just library, but all cryptocurrency. The more cryptocurrency we have in people's hands, the more individuals that have some, the more people there are that are supportive of it, the harder it will get for the government to do this. And so, you know, I'm supportive of everything that's going on, the spreading of all the different tokens, um, because I think that that's ultimately um, how they won't be able to do this. I don't think it, it's a small minority of people that want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's the regulators uh, and, and you know, and some politicians who are used to, who really want control over every everything, they're the people mm -hmm. who want to do this. And most people aren't going to like it. And the more we spread awareness, the um, the more that you know we can ultimately win against these people. So the last big question, Dan, is let's look on the bright side of things. What if this was a big mistake on their part because it's the Streisand effect now? Like. People kind of couldn't ignore, li they kind of ignore library a little bit, like, oh, there's 20 million people on the site, but, you know, that's not everyone. Oh, you know, well, bit shoots where it's at or whatever, whatever the hell else. And then now all of a sudden it just like, people just learn about li like library still a thing or library was ever a thing. They, this is the first time they're learning because the SEC is going after it. Now you got like interviews out the ass, you know, like you're all over the place. And then people are going to be like, freaking out and trying to give you money or whatever donations all that kind of stuff which we'll get to in a little bit uh, what if it just makes library kind of unstoppable and you might have to do something with the you might have to shuffle around the company in a way the company might go away maybe not even you maybe you're just kind of like whispering secret secret messages to whatever shadowy group decides to take it up but like what if do you think that this could be just the catalyst that makes library break through and become like the top one of the very top crypto players in the entire game. Yeah, well, I yes, I do. Yeah, um, I think that 
Um, we have been somewhat ignored in the crypto space. Well, also, I'm, I won't blame others. We haven't marketed ourselves to the crypto space. Again, that's what's so frustrating about this is like all the tokens that go out and like market to the people who want to buy tokens because mm-hmm. they want for the re- for the bad reasons, like they they all are uh, you know getting away with it or pay uh, you pay fifty million dollars and they're like they won't do it again, but then they just keep doing it again in shadier ways. Yeah, the, like you know we have you know we've gone to end users. I mean we have we have millions of people interacting mm-hmm. with the blockchain that have no idea that they're even doing that because I care about blockchain as uh, as an ability to enable new ways of sharing information. Yeah, that is why I care about this. Like. Uh, you know, it, I didn't set out to create a financial instrument. I didn't set out to uh, t- to do these crazy hype things. Like I've cared relentlessly about like end user experiences. And so I think that that's part of why we're ignoring the blockchain spaces. We've said, you know, we kind of don't care if you care about what we're doing, you can pay attention to it. But like this is about building a product that allows people to do things. And we've marketed it in that way. Mm. So last, but definitely not least, what could people do? People, you got everyone fired up. They're like, this sucks. This is our, this is our hill to die on. Where's my spear? So where are uh, their spears? Uh, you know, uh, so we have a website, help libraries save crypto. There's a petition on there that you can sign sharing that website and sharing this case is uh, very helpful. Um, we want to show that as many people as possible are, um, you know, behind this and like this and, and recognize how bad what the SEC is doing. And a way as a way of persuading regulators and politicians to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that you can do is just start using it. So if you're using YouTube, stop, come on to odyssey.com, create an account. It's very easy. You'll find lots of people, you know, there and you can have a better experience. And if you're already on there, spread it to three more people or five more people, give them a little bit of your cryptocurrency and get them onto the, um, onto the technology. Um, you know, because that the de- the wider spread it is and the more people using it, the more the harder it will be uh, to shut us down through these crazy enforcement actions. Well, thanks for sharing your time in these trying times. And yeah, all the best. Thanks. Bye.